the tides here in Washington are really big and tide is coming in right now. You can almost feel it with every wave get bigger and bigger. Welcome back to No Tears Frontiers. In this series, we travel all over the world on our KTM 1190 motorcycle. We've been through three different continents so far, and we post up our video diaries here. Yeah, thanks for riding along with us. Currently, we're on our way up to Alaska, and in the last episode, we were about to camp at a campground where a bear had just walked through our campsite. Da -da -da. <laughs> big tree that at some point wanted to grow a secondary tree as a limb. So that's pretty cool. Good morning. I can hear the sweet sound of Tim making hot water on the stove. The river. And there's two. Good morning. <laughs> it's like a fantasy fairy forest. <laughs> the bear coming back to search through everyone's food that's just kind of all yeah. over the place, yeah. We had to get comfortable with there being bears in the area and my first right. gut instinct was I'd rather be in an area with more humans where there's a bear right. just because, you know, strength in numbers, right? Exactly. But what we quickly realized is there's so That's so not the, true. The stupidity <laughs> in numbers. The problem with bears coming into campgrounds is they find garbage, they get used to the smells of all the food that people are cooking, and they can turn quite dangerous. If, if you leave garbage out and a bear comes, that's not necessarily the bear's fault. It's just trying to do its instincts of, exactly. of survival. So being on a motorcycle, obviously we don't have um, a secure place to put all of our food. When we're wild camping and we're way out in the forest and we don't have a bear box like we yeah. did at this campground, um, we'll put our food way up in a tree. This time we were going to put all of that in the bear box. We were when the only I, ones who utilized the bear yeah, box. Yeah, no one else was using it, which I understand because they, they also have cars and stuff. And we thought, all right, everyone Everyone's going to be responsible and take all of their food. People knew that this bear had been around, so they were going to put all their food or anything with smells inside their vehicles at least overnight. Wrong. <laughs> the neighbors across the way said that um, just a few hours ago they saw a black bear <clears throat> walk the through campsite. the camp, like on that road over there. right where our tent was. And he was kind of rummaging through garbage and um, the little campsites over here. So um, there is a bear box. So yeah, we're definitely- we're gonna sleep. <laughs> that is not where we're gonna sleep. So the night was uh, a little bit stressful for me. I kept waking up at every little sound. Yeah. There was a guy across the way who was snoring and Sometimes I think, oh, was that a bear snort? Or was that a it human did. snore? It did sound, they're very <laughs> confusing. The bigger you are, the more you sound like a bear. Yeah. You snore, you know, like, oh. I was like, whoa. <laughs> the hell is that? It was yeah. just a human. <laughs> but we survived, uh, but I had to go potty. But I saw that our neighbor directly to us, they had a car that was parked near to our campsite and they put their bag of trash 
right in front of their car, like right outside, right outside, like closer to our tent than their own tent. Our lovely neighbors have a you know 50 gallon garbage bag full of garbage that they just put on the side of their van, it just says uh, like. Well, let's like, get it away from us. And it's come like, and get it. <laughs> you have your car, you have a bear box. I know. You don't have intelligence. So we packed up at the campground, and thankfully we had not been eaten by bears. Yes, That's all of our limbs. One. <laughs> yes, two, we have three, all of our limbs. <laughs> <laughs> we knew that the road that we had taken to get to the campground was gorgeous and there were all these other little roads that went around yeah. the forest and around the rivers there and we decided let's just go on all of them. I had a taste of this rainforest and I yes. wanted more. It was beautiful. It was so fantastic. The trees there, not only are they huge, and not only are there like ferns and all this kind of rainforest-esque plant life going on on the undergrowth, but the trees themselves are covered in this moss. Yeah. Hanging moss and just regular fuzzy moss. <laughs> And man, is it insanely beautiful. It looked like, yeah, the trees were wearing like little green alpaca sweaters or something. Yeah. You know, <laughs> some of them made like weird shapes, you know, that uh -huh. you can envision the whole fairy forest of, you know, yeah. crazy creatures. I could totally see how someone would think, oh, there's a Sasquatch over yeah. there kind of walking through the forest just because of these weird shapes and all that hanging fur that they have all over them. I revert anything odd and strange to Dr. Seuss, and these are totally Dr. Seussable trees, the fuzzy wuzzies. Absolutely. Yeah, it's like they're wearing a, a full fur sweater. was a Sasquatch out there, um, he would have blended in perfectly. He would have, this is true. <laughs> As we made our way through these gorgeous, gorgeous roads in the forest, we eventually went past Lake Quinault again. And headed on towards the coast. I could ride a loop around this forest over and over and over and over again. Yeah, I mean, the sunshine is welcome, but I mean, we're in a rainforest, and the fact that this is a second day when we're not being just pummeled with water is a blessing all by itself. By that point in time, we were getting hungry. We stopped at a place for lunch, and once again, I someone had a burger. 
<laughs> my American diet. What do you get yeah. while on the road? You just have Cheese a lot burger. of burgers. I'm a simple man, folks. <laughs> but once again, we got good advice from someone at the lunch spot. In fact, this was the server. She yeah. told us, you have to go along the coast and there are some beautiful beaches there. And someone overheard our conversation mm -hmm. and he was like, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just have a, a couple of things I wanna way. say. Yeah. And you have to stop by the Tree of Life. Mm -hmm. And we were like, well, pfft, yeah. Who doesn't stop by the Tree of Life? <laughs> First time I heard of it, but yeah, I'm going. And you have to go to these beaches. They're gorgeous. Yeah. So we headed down and we did hop back on 101. And we pulled into a little campground where the Tree of Life is just a walk down the, the, the beach. So rumor is there is a Tree of Life here. Yep. <laughs> wow. So this is the tree of life. It's hanging on by mere threads. You can see all the roots. just suspended above us by barely nothing. There was the tree of life just hanging on. It should be called the tree of hanging on for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> God, go see it now, folks. Cause there is- It's not gonna last weeks. forever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just like, ah. And I would be so mad if I'm like, oh my God. And people are just taking pictures of me. I'd be like, help me, somebody, <laughs> somebody help me. But yeah, it's it, a very cool tree. Yeah, the roots had been exposed as the bluff had eroded away. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was beautiful. There was, it was a, a, it was a, crowded. a lot of people. And so mm -hmm. to get that, like, if you click the Google image, right? If you Google Tree of Life in Olympic National Park, you'll see it and it looks beautiful. And then when you go there, there's little kids and stuff climbing around. So you will not get that same photo, but no. uh, but it was still pretty cool. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was definitely worth it. You yeah, know? such a cool shape. Yeah. And we got really excited for this other beach that that person at the restaurant had yeah. recommended to us. Beach number three. <laughs> I think we went to beach number He was like, oh yeah, there's beach one, two, three, and four. And I'm like, really awesomely unique name. <laughs> that is whoever, I think it was Lewis and Clark. He was, <laughs> he was like, this, my friend. It's beach, beach number, number one. one. <laughs> I actually got confused whatever beach he said was the best, so I just kind of... But we went to beach number three. I thought it was four. Well, we went to we one went of the numbers. We went to beach. We went to go we'll round. Beaches. We went to beach three and a half. We'll average it out. 3.5. 3.5. And uh, yeah, it was, it was... First, there was a very steep trail there was. that went down to the beach. You can see the ocean out there. This is a gorgeous trail, but yeah, going it's going to be one, yeah, interesting going, going up. up. We are not hikers, so no. <laughs> hashtag no fly bot, a motorcycle. <laughs> We didn't take off all of our gear, and so we went down, and I just knew the return up would, would suck. Yes. Well, once you go down, gotta go back up. And wow, once we've got down there. smell the fish, the saltiness. Wow, it's so beautiful. There's rocks sticking up like cracks and they're super smooth. are really big and the tide is coming in right now. You can almost feel it with every wave get bigger and bigger. And 
the rocks out there had been worn smooth by all of that water spray coming off of the waves by all of the wind. It was just really stunning, all the rock formations yeah. and how the waves would just splash up against it. This rock has such a great shape. It's almost like a cave has been carved out by the sea. We didn't see any sea anemones or starfish, which would have been cool, but I do think sea anemones are a little creepy. Yeah, so beach number 3.5 was, was nice. awesome. We highly recommend <laughs> beach 3.5. We had a we had long... We had to climb back up. Oh, yeah. It took three days, four days to climb back up this little track. It did, it did. It was, it was, it was steep. Not recommended to do this in all your motorcycle gear. Oh. It's day four of climbing back up the steps from where we parked our motorcycle. <laughs> it is hard going up this hill. <laughs> And walking in motorcycle boots is not the most comfortable hiking boots. No, not recommended. Yeah. <laughs> we made it back up and we got on the motor scooter and yeah. we, we headed back on down the road. It was a beautiful drive, but we were kind of heading as fast as we could to this ferry that we knew we'd have to take. Yeah, in Port Townsend? Port Townsend, that's right. We made our way to the northern side of the Olympic Peninsula and then um, hit the town of Port Townsend where there was a ferry over to Whidbey Island. Yeah. So we are here at the ferry terminal in Port Townsend, trying to make our way over to Whidbey Island. And I had to look over here at the map, but Whidbey Island is connected to the mainland Washington via a bridge. We just got word that the next ferry is going to be in more than an hour. So we're just gonna bide our time here in Port Townsend and explore we had an hour to kill and i was getting hangry because I, I yeah i often don't eat breakfast and by two o'clock if i haven't been fed <laughs> things go astray but uh so we got some uh we got some dinner what do you think i had folks <laughs> we'll do a poll <laughs> did i have pizza a burger or sushi I had a burger, folks. It was a burger, I was of simple course. Burger. I was yes. like, but it was a nice little 50 joints, and it was... Uh, yeah, it was really nice. It was cool. I had a salad there. I just wasn't too hungry. Yeah. It overlooked the ocean. Yeah. And it was in... Port Townsend is a cute little town. It is. And the ferry ride was really fun. cool just to see us pulling away from the harbor and all the yeah. views of the mountains and the mist and where it's raining and where it's not and the sun was setting over by the Salish Sea. It was gorgeous. I 
was excited to see our, our good buddy Dave. Yeah. Cause, uh, I met him at an expo three or four years ago for the first time. Yeah, I think five years five ago years now. Five years ago, yeah. yeah. And uh, he lived on the island and he invited us to his home and I hadn't seen him for a while. And Dave came to meet us yeah. at the other side of the ferry. He brought his motorcycle and he was like, look, I'm gonna take you on some of the most scenic roads on this island yeah. over to a very special place called Deception Pass. Mm -hmm. And we thought, oh, Deception Pass, that's an interesting name. Yeah. The ride was gorgeous. It was a gorgeous ride. And when we got like passes to us are like over mountains or they're like road based, land based. Mm. But uh Deception Pass it's got was a something name. Yeah. totally mind blowing. Yeah. That's it for this episode. I hope you really liked it. If you did and if you enjoy journeying all over the world with us, please give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe everybody. Bye. Peace.